Hi, my name is Andrew Bianc, and I serve as one of the pastors here at New Westminster Christian Reformed Church. This is an exciting weekend for us because we're celebrating 70 years of God's faithfulness to us as a church family. We've been in this neighborhood, Burnaby, New Westminster, for 70 years, and in that time, God has tangibly displayed his renewing power through Jesus Christ to our neighborhood and beyond. In this video, we have opportunity to learn a little bit about that history, to be encouraged by stories that members of our congregation will share, but also, I think, to be inspired as we look forward to a new chapter of ministry that God has in store for us. I hope that as you watch this video, you will be encouraged by God's faithfulness to us these 70 years and be inspired as we serve him together in the new chapter of ministry that he has in store for us. In the early 1950s, after World War II, many European immigrants came to Canada. Among them were people from the Netherlands, often with large families, determined to establish themselves in this land of unlimited opportunities. After they had arrived in this country, they felt that being here also had a spiritual and cultural task. They felt the calling to start a church in New Westminster. On October 10, 1952, a group of people representing 38 families and Reverend de Kukuk gathered at New Westminster Methodist Church to organize a new church, and First Christian Reformed Church of New Westminster was born. Well, I began in 1952, and we were one month in Vancouver, and the church was meeting on Fifth Avenue in the meeting hall it was an Anglican church, I think. And that was filled with young couples and a couple of kids, a couple of older people. And they all talk Dutch, and us too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In 1954, the church purchased a two-acre parcel of land on 12th Avenue in Burnaby for $9,500. A building was erected and completed in May 1955. At the outset, it was decided that the building would serve a dual purpose. The church would use it on Sundays for worship services, and John Knox Christian School would use it as an elementary school during the week. Um, when we came here, the, uh, the church, uh, the congregation was gathering in the school, then across the street and this building wasn't here. It had five, five, I think, five or six classrooms, uh, demountable petitions that were put in every Saturday night and then taken down every Sunday night. And there were two services in that building. The current church building was built and dedicated in February 1962. And remarkably, it was done mostly by volunteer labor provided by members of our congregation. It was built by free labor. And they had a price to build it. The cost for this building uh, was $110,000. By the time they were finished, it had cost them $70,000. So they saved $40,000 by having made a decision to build it by free labor. Now they needed somebody who knew something about building, and so they asked Len Nord, he was a very young man, and they appointed him as foreman and superintendent to build this church. And I said, are you kidding me? No, 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 I'm, I'm a, young, I'm a young, young man, and I, I can't do that, that's not, I don't have the authority, I don't have the expertise, uh, no way, no way, no way. Well, no, they said, no, you can do it. He says, but we're here for you too. People, there were some real well-trained people like Henry uh, in the committee. He pulled up his sleeves in spare time and, and started working and so did everybody else. But 
people with no skills, they came to help too, a lot of them. There was a, um, the custodian who lived across the street, the Howlings. Every week, Mrs. Howling and Mr. Howling fed the crew, gave them coffee and, and, um, and cake or cookies, whatever it was, every Saturday for a whole year. And I thought, there were such hospitable people. Yeah, and I mean, there must have been 20 people every Saturday, I would say, something like that, or maybe even more. And Dutch people like coffee. <laughs> In 1973, the Beehive Preschool was built so that we could build relationships with young families in our surrounding neighborhood. We wanted to share stories from the Bible and the love of Jesus with young children and their families in our community. They have always shown God's love to the neighborhood and I think also the parent community has walked alongside many of the other parents who don't know Christ. And many of these parents are from within the neighborhood and many of them walk to preschool. So it's a real opportunity for the church to show love to this neighborhood and also for parents of preschool age children to build good relationships with those in our immediate community. We visit with congregations at worship across Canada. We're worshipping today at the First Christian Reformed Church of New Westminster near Vancouver in British Columbia. Our congregation has always loved music and loved singing. In the early years, we decided we wanted to accompany our singing with a high-quality cassavant organ built in Quebec. When we started putting it back in, he was halfway and he said, hey, play something. How does it sound? Oh my goodness, the acoustics were just unbelievable. Because the bricks, the, those porous bricks, they absorbed all sound like carpet does on the floor. If it's a fluffy carpet or fluffy pews, it absorbs all the sound. Now it's a hard surface and it bounces. So we had a wonderful acoustics. They had a little, uh, we would have boxes, little boxes, and you would go to the people who had their birthday and you wished them a very happy birthday and then you showed them the box and said, well, are you, uh, could we ask for a donation for the organ fund? And that went on for quite a few years. But then in 1991, we had a renovation here, the inside was, the interior was renovated. And then they made this part of the budget, done and over with, and they completed the organ. Because now the building, sound-wise, had come alive. So this is one of the finer churches where the acoustics are really perfect, especially for people, for choirs for recordings, a very fine sound. Growth continued and reached its peak in 1969 with close to 1,200 members. And, and the first time that I came on, on the pulpit here, I'd say, oh man, what a lot of people. Now, I came from a, 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 a rather big church, but this was uh, even, even more so, and uh, so that, that kind of struck me. We had a membership of 270 families, and I think in those days we dubbed we said four to four for a family, so that's over 1,200 people. So the church was packed. The church was packed, and then it became so big that we parted. We lost the people for Burnaby Church, Surrey Church, and then later, you know, Port Moody, or yeah. In 1962, a church was started in Surrey today's Fleetwood CRC. And in 1969, a church was started in Coquitlam, today's Tapestry Monday Park Church. In the early 1980s, our church sponsored many Vietnamese refugees and settled some 30 families. Since then, our church has sponsored over 1,000 people from various countries. At one point, we helped form a Vietnamese church in Vancouver called Faith in Action Christian Reform Church. An announcement? An, an announcement. If anybody would be interested in sponsoring, 
And the government said, if you have five or more working people, then you're allowed to sponsor a family. So after he made that uh, plea, 10 groups were formed right away. And from that 10, we, could, we were able to sponsor over 100 refugees. Yeah. The congregation already was busy helping a lot of Vietnamese getting settled here. And then we said, hey, you know, we should, these people are going all over the place and, and uh, we'd like to help them also to get to know the gospel. And so we started a church service here in a, in a meeting hall. And so we had a, a pastor come in and he did that while we had our own service. Now as more current issues presented themselves during the last seven years, our church has sponsored and resettled two families from Syria and several families from Afghanistan. And just seeing them arrive at the airport, just oh, running, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> just running to each other, um, yeah, is, is very emotional and it's also then you feel that this this is the, our immigrant story is you know because we have so few relatives just having your family reunited yeah yeah that is the most wonderful thing for me to sit to bring the families together again yeah when i first came dave and i should talk about this um earlier that how we felt connected with people who who first came here as a migrant, so I felt like they understand what it's like to be in a new country. Like, I can resonate with their story and they resonate with my story. I think that's what makes this church um, unique. Yeah. When I first came to our church now about seven years ago, one of the things that I soon uh, discovered and appreciated was how missions was not just one of the ministries of this church, but was part of the DNA of the church, so to speak. And that missional DNA has been expressed uh, differently throughout the different times of the history of our church. Uh, more recently, I think in the past decade or so, Mosaic has been an important part of our ministry where international students are welcomed and uh, was able to grow together in Christ. And even at one point, we uh, transformed our parsonage into what we called Mosaic Home, a house for international students to live together and grow together in Christ as a community. And as this mosaic ministry flourished, uh, we also began to see and was able to welcome more and more individuals and families from diverse cultural backgrounds. Uh, at different times, there has been a focus on ministry to Iranians, Chinese, and a growing number of Koreans in our church. And one of the most visible expressions of this diverse family of God has been our multicultural worship nights where people from every nation, tribe, people, language standing before the throne of God in worship together. As we remember 70 years, we can't forget the two years of COVID pandemic. Hi folks, I wanted to create this short video greeting and say hello. Um, I can't see all of you personally, at least not for the foreseeable future, as all of us are being asked to take extra precaution and isolate uh, Worshipping separately from each other. Um, having to preach to an empty sanctuary and recording, pre-recording sermons and worship services were tough for a lot of us. Um, I'm really thankful to God for the tech-savvy volunteers that seemed to come up out of the woodwork and helped us transition very quickly to offering our services online. We met together on Zoom for small groups, for different meetings, and all of that we managed thankfully for to these volunteers. But I must say, uh, in July of 2021, when we could get back together in person, that celebration service with our Sunday school kids marching in with 
uh, bottles of champagne, non-alcoholic of course, but popping the corks together and just cheering together, that warmed my heart uh, to see God's people in person, many whom weren't wearing masks anymore, was a real blessing. And it reminded me of how important it is to be together as the community of God's family. When we worship, when we pray, when we sing, I'm so thankful that that chapter is behind us now. And uh, But I'm very grateful for how God still blessed us in what was a pretty difficult time. Throughout the 70 years, there were various Bible studies for our youth, ladies, and men. You know, some of these were gems, cadets, Sunday school for children, and nursery. Through these opportunities, small groups like Coffee Break for Women and Family Circles flourished for years. This led to the creation of Alpha Courses, Stephen Ministry, or Ship Visiting. On Sundays, others served in hospitality as greeters and ushers or technical volunteers. The church provided the opportunity to learn more about the Bible and Jesus. Serving in His name was always encouraged and available at our church. In the beginning, the members of New West Church were exclusively Dutch and mainly young. Today, we have young and elderly members in our congregation, plus members from more than 20 different nationalities worshipping together on any given Sunday. The diversity is well reflected in our staff and within the leadership of our congregation. And several fellowships are emerging where people can worship and pray together in their own heart language. How I see God working today through our church is that uh, we become very multicultural and God has stretched us that way and it's exciting. It's exciting because you see God again uh, moving us in the last years to be open for, for change and I think God is, is preparing us for the future. When we decided to become a regular member here, kind of opened up the opportunity for me to meet like different nations coming together to worship God and also learning to how they pray in their home countries. I think it helped me expanding the knowledge of God. There's not like only one way to worship God. So many different ways that God have gifted and blessed like each cultural groups. Also, you get to see different um, type of families, like younger family, older couples. Yeah, so it feels like a, a big family that you are kind of stepping into as you come into this church. So, How I would describe New SCRC is definitely family, not just like physically, but also spiritually. It feels like a community where everyone knows each other and everybody gets together. And so it doesn't feel like you're by yourself. The Lord has been faithful throughout the 70 years of its existence. Will remain faithful, we know that and we have lived that and the Lord has shown us that in many ways. But what we are recalling and reflecting on now and celebrating is history. But let's remember, history is His story. A big blessing you get from if you look back and walk through the, all the blessings that you've received and that you are now uh, reaping the results from. How can you pass that on to the next generation? I think that is very important. It's amazing to hear some stories from people who have been around a lot longer than me, to hear how God has worked and to think about how He's worked in our own lives and if He's moved this much for me in my time in this church, then I'm sure we all have stories to share about God's moving. And as we look forward to uh, 70 more years, um, I hope that we might share how God is faithful to us and to our church. 